shit, man. Ask him anything. It's been going on for years now. Years. Uh, Last time I did one was. I feel like 2013. Do you realize oh, I shit. haven't done an ask him anything in nearly a fucking year? Dude, you haven't done one in nearly eight years now. Holy like, fuck, huh? Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's crazy. Hello and welcome. Let's just start off right there to a Ask Kev Anything. Apparently the first one that I've done in eight years. Ask Kev Anything 31! Holy shit! So sit down, stick around, and as always, enjoy. If you hear barking, by the way, it's my dog. She's been barking all day. She wants to go in and out of the house, in and out of the house, in and out of the house. Bark, 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 bark. I don't know if she's stressed out, losing her mind, but, I mean, she's a dashing, so that's what they do. <laughs> Fair warning. All right, so, let's start with some of the questions you guys have. And, by the way, like, I do not or I try not to at least read questions beforehand because I find it's more interesting if I just answer on the fly. Therefore, what that means is that sometimes I'm going to have really weird answers or answers that don't look like I put much thought into them because I'm just hearing a question for the first time. Once in a blue moon, I'll pop up a notification, I'll kind of see one, then I'll hide it because I don't really want to know what people are asking me before I actually look at the questions. So. I'll say this, just scrolling through this quickly, there were a lot of questions, so I will not be able to get to all these, and I apologize in advance, um, but I thank everyone that did submit a question. It made my heart bitter batter. All right, first question from Metal Bite Media. Metal Bite Media asks, what is the single greatest episode of all Transformer series? Very good question. What's the greatest, or at least in my opinion, what's the greatest Transformer episode? There's so many to choose from. And this one's hard for me. It's hard for me just to pick one. So if I do have to pick one, I, and you know, people are people are gonna say this is this might not be the popular opinion because I'm not gonna go in season like I'm I'm just gonna go with original series here. I'm not gonna go with all the Transformer episodes ever. I could too because in reality the answers would be the same anyways. But so I'm not even gonna go season one Transformers. I'm not gonna go with season two of the original Transformers. That's not where my favorite episode is. My favorite episode is in season three of the Transformers. And the best episode, I think, in my opinion, is, for me anyways, is Ghost in the Machine, in which Starscream's ghost returns, possesses Scourge, and tries to make a deal with Unicron in, court to, in order to give him back his eyes and his body. In exchange, Unicron will give Starscream his body back. I find it's a great episode. It's entertaining. It's funny. It's neat. Starscream is a douchebag at the end. Perfect. So, love that episode. And an honorable mention at second place, or even maybe tied for first, would be Dark Awakening, also in Season 3, in which uh, Optimus Prime is brought back to life in a zombie form. So, um, those are two great episodes. Uh, Time Force Ranger. 04 asks, what's your favorite kind of food? So my favorite kind of food is donair. Donair is my favorite food. If you don't know what donair is, it's kind of like a gyro, but like 5,000 times better. That's my favorite food food. My favorite dessert, not food food, would be ice cream. My God, I love ice cream. Oh, ice cream, yeah, ice cream is like my... Ice cream is my weakness. I love ice cream. I love cereal too, especially new cereals, cereals that we haven't seen in a while, 80s cereals that are re-released, all that stuff. I love that. I love Pop-Tarts. Uh, I love Vachon Log at Christmas. I love all food. There's too much foods. Uh, here is a question from uh, Peyton Nelson. And uh, 
They're right. Do you still watch? I still keep up on watching wrestling. Also, are there any one-on-one -on -one classes that you haven't done yet that you would like to do? Um, do I watch wrestling? Yes, I do. I don't watch WWE. I haven't watched WWE in a long time. Uh, well, I say that. I watched a Rumble. Basically, I watched a Rumble. So between the two Rumbles, like last year's and the one that just happened, I didn't watch WWE at all. So it's just the Rumbles. Um, I do watch AEW pretty much every week. I do watch New Japan Pro Wrestling as well. I love those two promotions. Uh, I, I, I like the smaller promotions. I just do. I find WWE is just so over-polished that it's just... To, it's just not wrestling anymore. It's it's more circus than wrestling. I just I don't I don't like that. Uh, NXT is good. NXT is a good example of something that's not overly polished. It feels a lot like, you know, it feels like New Japan. It feels like AEW, uh, AAA. Uh, it feels a little, <laughs> produced a little better than PWG, but I still do like PWG. Um, I'll even watch like. Like anything, like wrestling, like uh, like the wrestlings from Joey Janela. Like I'll watch those too. Like I like I like everything. I just I don't like WWE. It's just it's too polished. Um, Impact, uh, yeah, it's okay. Impact's okay, I guess. Ring of Honor's okay too, but basically, a mainly AEW and New Japan. Uh, enjoy those. Uh, enjoy the Battle of Los Angeles when that used to when that was a thing in PWG. Um, those were always cool. I miss having the I miss seeing the fans though. You know what I mean? I miss the fans. Like there's a lot of moments in wrestling that I've watched recently that I was like, holy shit! If there was a crowd, like how would they re how would they react to this? Like I I really do miss that. I also miss Kenny Omega not using freaking Devil Sky as his theme. Oh my god! Stop it! You're heel now. You're heel. You're with the box. I use that theme. Like when you came out to that, it was like you were literally watching wrestling God come out. It was a catharsis. Oh, I miss that. Anyways, that's just me. Um, <laughs> uh, this question is from uh, Sasuke Danuchita. I, I, I just murdered your name, bro. Sorry. Are you thinking about bringing back a Nail or Fail? If so, when can we expect a new one? Definitely. Nail or Fail is coming back. I have a few things that I want to talk about in you know, the next Nail or Fail. So yes, definitely. Nail or Fail will be coming back very shortly, probably after this video. Um, I like to do these live because I don't like to know the answers before I ask, before I ask the questions. Uh, here's a cute one. Technoman232 asks, uh, what are your thoughts on my older brother, Stephen Phils? He's your biggest fan. Stephen Phils is amazing. He is the reason I breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure who he is, but, but, if he is a fan of me and he is the biggest fan, that means he is, he's achieved in life. He is at an echelon, a level the very few who may you <laughs> let me rewind that. The very few human beings will ever achieve. Stephen, keep watching, man. I appreciate it. Um, uh, this is from H. Cassian. Hey, Kev. Long time view. I just want to ask, what's up, man? How's life been? Did COVID affect much in your life? Feels like you see you periodically, maybe once or twice a year. Hope all is good. Cheers. Uh, COVID, COVID, holy shit, I'm COVID. COVID's affected a lot. Um, I work from home now, which is cool. Um, Amy works in a hospital, so not as cool. We're lucky we live, though, like in a small town, you know, in New Brunswick, so there's not a lot of cases. So we've got that going for us, which is good. Uh, some of the bigger cities in Canada and all across the world, I mean, I, I, see, I see in the U.S., uh, I see it in, what, Argentina or, you know, everywhere like like there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on there's a lot of stuff going on and it's i think this thing about covid is if everybody would just follow the rules not make it political it'd be so much better 
when I hear about people like the anti-maskers and all that, like it just it drives me absolutely nuts. And when I hear when I hear that same the thing, the whole the whole excuse that they use, like, well, you said in the beginning that wearing a mask didn't matter. Doesn't matter. It wasn't safer if you wore a mask. Of course they told you that. They saw what you did with the fucking toilet paper. Of course they told you that. They knew that if you started hoarding all the masks, which you would have certainly done, you would fuck up every healthcare worker. That's why they said that. You can't blame them for doing that at all. I totally, when they were saying that in the beginning, I remember they were like, well, you know, it doesn't really matter if you wear a mask. It's not safer. You know, you can do it without a mask. In my head, I was like, oh, yeah, masks are safer. They know. But they can't actually say it because, unfortunately, there's a certain percentage of the population that are complete dipshits that would literally fucking sell their grandmother, that will go and hoard every single N95 mask that they see and resell them. Or not sell them at all, or think I'm picking these in the bunker. So yeah, it's just, it's it's so sad that you have to tell adults a childish lie because their brains and their whole way of life is like a child, and they're not gonna understand. It's gonna be me, 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 me and not give a shit about anyone else. And it's sad. It's sad that it's like that. I understand why they did it. I get it. And I'm not mad at them for doing that. I'm mad at the individuals that hoarded toilet paper, that hoarded sanitizer, because you're the reason why they didn't want people to know too much of the truth because they didn't want you to hoard the fucking masks. I'm sorry I'm swearing, but it drives me absolutely fucking nuts. Um, but uh, other than that, yeah. <laughs> Life is good, right? What can you do? It is what it is. Uh, we're all going to get through this. We just got to be uh, watch out for each other. Be good to each other. We'll get through this. So this one is about uh, the new Netflix series, Transformers. Optimus Prime 2471 asks, what do you think of the War for Cybertron trilogy on Netflix and the toy lines that have happened during their positive popularity? Um, the show is good. I mean, it doesn't, it's not canon, but that's okay because none of the shows really that came out after G1 were ever canon anyways, except for Beast Wars. So, and I guess Beast Machine too, to that effect from Beast Wars. But so, yeah. So I'm okay. I'm, I like the show. It's good. It's entertaining. It's fun. It's fun because then my kids, my daughters watch it with me. So that's a plus. The toys have been great. Everything from War for Cybertron has been great. Even with the new announcements today from other toys that are coming out soon, like the Ark, uh, Trax, uh, uh, Beast Wars Scorponaut. They're all beautiful. So, yeah, I can't. I can't complain. This the show. The show is good. I mean, there's not like I can't sit here and say there are many like moments in the show that I'm like, oh my god, that was a crazy moment. Like there's cool stuff. I mean, the the one there's I guess there's one one clip from the show, one scene that I'm like, and I I rewatched it a couple times because I found it so neat. It's when Galvatron is confronting Megatron and gets sucked away by Unicron and you see like the grid pattern, which is kind of like when he was created, you saw the grid pattern. But he actually, he's the one who gives him the golden disc. That's pretty cool. That's amazing. Because that kind of sets up what will happen later in Beast Wars, right? So that I liked. I really liked that scene. Um, so yeah, so no, it's good. It's good to introduce new fans to the, to the concept, to the show, to the toys, to everything about it. So that's great. Uh, <laughs> this one is from Random11. Uh, he says, How do you keep dust off your collection? And how do you keep flimsy jointed toys from falling over? Uh, there's stands you can buy for the flimsy jointed toys. Uh, they're actually they're like doll stands. They're kind of like. I have a few. It's like it's a plastic base and there's like a metal thing that goes in and you push it in and it has like a clamp on it. So it'll like hold your figure like this. And then they can't 
I mean, <laughs> the joints can be as loose as they want. It's literally holding the figure up. That's all it's doing. So those are pretty cool. You can actually get those on a, on Amazon for like next to like I'll say next to nothing, but very cheap. Like they all come from China, right? So you get like a bag of them. Uh, those are neat. <clears throat> you see them a lot in the Barbie community. Um, dust off the collection. Well, that's basically if you, to me like my toy room. I don't go to my toy room very often, so that's already a plus. So there's not activity going on in there. There's not a lot of like wind going on in there, there's not like in and outs going on in there, so that's a help. You can get your stuff and put them like in, like in, like in dip wolf cases, you can do all of that stuff. Uh, one thing that works neat enough is like computer duster, like duster for your computer, like that stuff there, the little straw thing, that works, that works good too. Um, use that. <laughs> Here is a question from Liam Hagen, and they write, if you were to rank all live action theatrically released Spider-Man movies from the best to the worst, or worst to best, what would the order be? Whoa. All right, so I'm going to need to remember all of the Spider-Man movies in my head and I don't think I I don't want to forget anything and it look like an idiot so I'm just going to bring them up so I can see them mm, Spider-Man movies look at that Spider-Man movies in order release oh this is cool alright so, I'm not going to count anything Avenger-wise. I'm not going to count that. Leave that out. Um, so, let's look here. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Ooh, oh yeah. Okay, so, let's do this. Order of the movies. I will go with Spider-Man 2, Sam Raimi 1, as the number one best movie from Spider-Man. Probably also is my favorite comic book movie. So Spider-Man 2 would be number one for me. I would follow it with... Uh, <laughs> I want to say... Uh, I'm not going to... See, Into the Spider-Verse, I don't consider it a movie because it's CGI, so I don't want to put it in there. I... I liked Homecoming too, so I'll, okay, I'll go Homecoming 2, I'll go Spider-Man 1, 3, I'll go, and this, <laughs> this is going to piss off people, but I got to go Spider-Man number 3 from Raimi at the next spot, just because of Venom, I have a soft spot for it, and then I'm going to go with um, The Amazing Spider-Man, the first one, and then The Amazing Spider-Man, the second one. Although, yeah, 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 I am. That's what I'm going to do. That's my order. <laughs> Hope you're able to catch that. Um, all right. So moving on. <laughs> so Metal Byte, Metal Byte Media is actually one of my friends in the... He's writing funny questions here, but I'm going to answer them because I think he'll get a kick out of it, too. If you try to fail and succeed, then which have you done? If you try to fail and succeed, then which have you done? I guess it kind of depends. Did you, did you succeed at trying to fail? Which means, did you succeed at failing? Or do you mean that... I've succeeded when I was actually trying to fail. Therefore, I was unsuccessful. <laughs> it's really like, okay, if you try to fail and succeed, then which have you done? If you try to fail and succeed, then which have you done? Then you, if you try to fail and you succeed, which have you done? <laughs> 
You succeeded, I guess. I guess you succeeded. At failing, but you succeeded. It's, <laughs> this sounds like my life. Um, here is a message from Joker2258. As a longtime student attending the original 101 when I was probably 10 years old. Holy shit, man. That's awesome. What do I have to do to get your take on Donny Kate's current Venom run? I actually don't have to do much. This, um, if there is a 101 that will come out shortly, it'll probably be Revolving Venom. So, I think the odds are pretty good that you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna get a class on that. 10 years old! That's awesome. Makes me feel old though, but it's awesome. All right, um, let's go to the last question here. I don't want to make this video uh, 50 minutes long. Uh, <laughs> it's what made me laugh again from uh, Metal Bite Media. What's the deal with corn nuts? Is it corn or is it a nut? So, what's the deal with corn nuts? What's the deal? with corn nuts deal what the deal with corn nuts no 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 what's the deal with corn nuts deal what's the deal with corn nuts no no what's the deal with corn nuts deal 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 what's the deal with corn nuts Deal with Gorna. No, corn nuts. G Gorna? Corn nuts. G Gorna? Corn nuts. Gorna? Who are these people? 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 Is it corn? Is it corn? No, corn! 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 Or is it a nut? Or is it a nut? I think you're the one. We're done. <laughs> that, that whole thing probably only made sense to one person. Thanks for sending in the question, guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, Take care. Later, guys.